Republicans, the gun lobby, and Fox News are once again lying and making ridiculous excuses for why they oppose wildly popular gun safety measures. After two horrific mass shootings in the span of less than a week, for more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we slowly emerge from the grip of one deadly plague that's ravaged the country for the past year, the coronavirus, we're once again being confronted with yet another deadly plague that has haunted this country for decades, the plague of gun violence. And in both cases, there's been a small, minority of sociopaths with outsized power in our politics who stand in the way whenever the rest of us try to do something about it. They've been too busy melting down about Dr. Seuss or the Looney Tunes or Potato Head dolls. Next, they're gonna start whining that the Biden administration is trying to outlaw Pez. You can have my Spider-Man dispenser when you pry it from my cold, dead hands, not my president. In fact, on Monday, Fox News barely covered the horrific Boulder shootings in primetime. Sean Hannity opened his show by briefly mentioning it and then quickly moved on to something that he apparently considered much more important. We start tonight a Fox News alert. Tonight, authorities responded to a shooting at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado. Officials are currently right this moment holding a press conference. We have our reporters on the ground. We'll bring you the details as they emerge tonight. We start tonight and turn to Joe Biden, who after falling not once, not twice, but three times, trying to climb the stairs on Friday, enjoying a restful weekend with zero public events on Saturday and Sunday. That's grim. Hannity's a guy who would watch Manchester by the Sea and then be upset to find out there's no blooper reel. I know it was a sad movie, but you're telling me there weren't any on-set goofs or mix-em-ups? And Sean, no one's happier than I am that after a president who fell upward his whole life, metaphorically, we ended up with one who somehow did it literally three times. But my God, get your priorities straight. 10 people were murdered in a mass shooting in Boulder less than a week after eight people were murdered in a mass shooting in Atlanta, a hate crime that killed six Asian women amid a horrific nationwide rise in anti-Asian hate crimes. And on top of all that, there's also the more than a half a million who've died from a pandemic that's still raging. And your top story is the president tripping on the stairs. How's that gonna go over with your sponsors? Aren't most of them stairlift companies? And then the next night, Hannity attacked Democrats for supposedly rushing to, you know, do something about it. Democrats now rushing to capitalize on yesterday's horrific mass shooting without any details as usual. Thank you for standing up for our Constitution and the Second Amendment, because apparently many are not tonight and Joe Biden's threatening executive action. Well, Sean, that's exactly right. And, and the modern day left is, is more and more extreme. Ted Cruz looks like he got canned from his job at the mythical creature temp agency for stealing office supplies. I'm sorry, Ted, but we're gonna have to let you go. You stole a bunch of pens and the Yeti types faster. Second, you guys repeat the same bull line every time we go through this awful ritual. The gun safety advocates are somehow rushing to politicize it. First of all, we have an epidemic of gun violence that killed more than 19,000 people last year alone. A majority, a majority of Americans want gun safety reforms, including universal background checks, mandatory gun licenses, and a ban on semi-automatic weapons. It's the politicians and their patrons in the gun lobby that are holding those up. Second, the people who suddenly decry politics when a shooting happens are the same people who put guns in their political ads or proudly display guns in their backgrounds during political events, like they're zooming in from a remote hideout in the woods during a zombie apocalypse. I mean, look at that, that's insane. I don't care how you feel about guns casually showing off a bunch of killing machines like this is demented. If I accidentally found a room like this at a dinner party, I would make an excuse and leave. Did you find the bathroom okay? Uh, you know, I did. Also, honey, uh, the babysitter called and the boys are not feeling well, so she should, oh no. You went right at the end of the hallway instead of left, didn't you? No, 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 I only went left. I only saw a bathroom. The boys though, honey, they're very sick. We should go, it's diarrhea. No one is going anywhere. <laughs> oh, Cyrus, when will you put a lock on the gun room door? <laughs> and lastly, let's dispense with this ridiculous lie that has become canon on the right, that standing up to any sensible gun safety legislation means standing up for the Second Amendment. It's one of the greatest cons in the history of politics. For most of American history, the idea that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to own whatever gun you want was never even contemplated. Conservative Supreme Court Justice Warren Burger famously called it a fraud. If I were writing the Bill of Rights now, there wouldn't be any such thing as the Second Amendment. Which says? That uh, a well-regulated militia being necessary for the defense of the state 
people's rights to bear arms. This has been the subject of one of the greatest pieces of fraud, I repeat the word fraud, on the American public by special interest groups that I have ever seen in my lifetime. Now just look at those words. There are only three lines to that amendment. A well-regulated militia. If the militia, which was going to be the state army, was going to be well-regulated, why shouldn't 16 and 17 and 18 or any other age persons be regulated in the use of arms? That point is so blindingly obvious, it's shocking we even have to debate it. When the amendment was written, even the militia was supposed to be well-regulated. Do you think the founders would look at this and say, that's, exa that's exactly what we meant? And that's not even taking into account that the founders could never have conceived of the weapons we have now. In their day, it took nine minutes to load a gun, and half the time you pulled the trigger and it just went and the shot fell out on your shoe. Those dorks were tying keys to kites to learn about electricity. If you let Ben Franklin fire an AR-15, he would in his burlap yoga pants. Deborah, I invented electricity. Invent some better pants, Ben. <laughs> Hilarious, but his wife was named Deborah. <laughs> I would have thought the first Deborah was born in like 1940. <laughs> or how about private sales of guns, like at gun shows, which often don't even require background checks—a loophole to vast majority of Americans want closed. Watch this clip and ask yourself whether the people who wrote the Second Amendment would consider this well-regulated. If you buy a gun from someone in the business of dealing in firearms, federal law requires background checks. But the private dealers are not legally required to conduct background checks. I would ask you for a Virginia driver's license. That way I know you're from within the state. But if I gave you a fake Virginia driver's license, you would never know. I would have no idea. Would you trust me? Do I have an honest face? Would you sell it to me? I, I trust you. You don't think you have an honest face okay. to me. I mean. but, but that being said, sometimes if you don't think someone has an honest face, if you have a bad vibe, you don't sell it. Correct. That's right. All you need to buy a gun in this country is an honest face. We better hope to God Paul Rudd never decides to raise an army and overthrow the U.S. government. By the way, that dude's almost two years older than Ted Cruz. That's what happens when you moisturize your face instead of your hair. Paul Rudd would have to spend seven hours in a makeup chair to look like a man 20 months his junior. The idea that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to own a gun unconnected with service in a militia, an idea that was codified in 2008 by the conservative majority in the disastrous Heller decision is, to borrow Warren Burger's phrasing, a fraud. In fact, the argument is so absurd that in 1982, Senate Republicans issued a report claiming to have discovered clear and long lost proof that the Second Amendment to our Constitution was intended as an individual right of the American citizen to keep and carry arms. I'm sorry, long lost proof? Was it written in invisible ink on the back of the Constitution, or did you discover a secret stone tablet hidden inside the Liberty Bell? Did Nick Cage find this for you? Because while he is clearly one of our greatest living actors, I thought we had established a bipartisan consensus that we cannot trust the veracity of this man's long lost documents. The Constitution says yes on guns, and I was given up for adoption by a velociraptor. <laughs> and yeah, I know my current haircut looks like Sandberg's Nick Cage wig. <laughs> Again, as Warren Berger put it, it's a fraud. And of course, the NRA is no stranger to fraud. Given that it is currently bankrupt, as the state of New York pursues a fraud case against the organization, NRA officials allegedly con their members out of millions by fundraising off the Second Amendment and then using that money on, among other things, gifts for friends, travel expenses, and memberships at golf clubs and hotels, luxury black car services and travel consultants, and a safari gifted by an NRA vendor. These guys treated the NRA bank account like it was the showcase showdown on The Price is Right. The simple fact is, it is too easy to get a gun in this country, and we have far too many of them. Keep in mind that the U.S has about 4% of the world's population, and yet it also has more than 40% of the world's civilian firearms and more than 30% of the world's public mass shooters. And sophisticated statistical analyses show these two factors are directly related. And I appreciate that they crunch the numbers, but the fact that we even need a sophisticated statistical analysis to tell us there's a connection between how many guns we have and how many gun deaths we have is insane. If you eat a bunch of chili dogs and then ride the cyclone for an hour, you don't need a quantum physicist to tell you why you barfed all over your date. Maybe it's because I get nervous around the opposite sex. Mm, that's not it, pal. There is a very obvious connection here. Every analysis, every graph, correlating guns and gun deaths tells us that. And there are proven solutions we can implement. Famously, 
Australia confiscated 650,000 guns, murders and suicides plummeted. And yet every time another one of these horrific shootings happen, the same awful ritual plays out. The overwhelming majority of Americans say they support common sense gun safety measures like universal background checks, mandatory gun licenses, or a ban on assault weapons. And then there's the other hand, a much smaller faction of callous sociopaths who lose their minds at even the suggestion that we should maybe make it just a little harder to buy a gun in this country. Every time there's a shooting, we play this ridiculous theater where this committee gets together and proposes a bunch of laws that would do nothing to stop these murders. Oh, I'm sorry, Ted Cruz, are we keeping you from something more important? Are you supposed to be on spring break in Cancun holding the beer bong for a bunch of sophomores from Michigan State? You don't get to call anything ridiculous theater after you jetted off to Cancun during a deadly blackout, then flew back for a photo op where you handed out water, then jetted off again to Orlando for the Conservative Political Action Conference. That photo op was such ridiculous theater, I'm shocked you didn't get cast on Broadway. Tonight, the role of Mr. Mistopheles will be played by Ted Cruz. And the good news is, even that wouldn't make cats any worse. And by the way, these guys don't even have a coherent logic for why they oppose gun safety measures supported by the vast majority of Americans. Just listen to Louisiana Senator John Kennedy accidentally make the argument for gun safety reforms at yesterday's hearing. I'm not trying to perfectly equate these two, but we have a lot of drunk drivers in America that kill a lot of people. We ought, to, we ought to try to combat that, too. But I think what many folks on my side of the aisle are saying is that the answer is not to get rid of all sober drivers. Great idea, Senator. Let's treat guns like automobiles. You have to take a test and get a license before you can use one. You have to register it with the government, and the cops can take it away if you use it irresponsibly or if you leave it on the wrong side of the street from 9.30 to 11 a.m. on Thursdays. Imagine every time you accidentally committed even the tiniest infraction with a gun, they towed it like a car, and the only way to get it back was to take the F train down to a lot in a part of Brooklyn you've never heard of called East Coney Island Heights that only exists for like one magical week every 100 years and then pay a thousand dollar fine to a guy in a tiny booth who only accepts euros or camel cash and doesn't seem to have any sympathy for the fact that you were only parked illegally for five minutes to run into the only goddamn cafe in New York City that makes a matcha latte up to your wife's impossible standards. <laughs> Buddy! <laughs> Buddy, can you hear me? Can you hear me through the glass? <laughs> Buddy! <laughs> Most gun owners would be like, forget it, keep my gun. But there you go. Kennedy said, let's treat guns like cars. Fine by me. Introduce your legislation and let's get it passed. Of course, it won't surprise you to learn that he immediately backed off that and downgraded to a new dumber proposal. In my judgment, we do not need more gun control. We need more idiot control. You know, your fake folksy shtick isn't fooling anyone. This guy went to Oxford, so when he comes out hee-hawing and chewing on a weed, it's a little like watching Damian Lewis in Billions. We know you're British. You can eat as much pizza pie as you like. We know you're British, and you're wonderful. But if you really think we need idiot control, how about we start with the party that elected the guy who thought you could cure coronavirus by shooting bleach up your nose with the turkey baster, or the guy who thinks snowballs disprove global warming, or the congresswoman who wore a censored mask while speaking into a microphone on television on the floor of the United States Congress, or the senator who thinks, and this is real, that Greenland got its name because it used to be green. That is a real thing. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson said, not when he was nine, which would have been, you know, adorable, but this month, when he told the New York Times, I could be wrong there, but that's always been my assumption that at some point in time, those early explorers saw green. I have no idea. Sure, dude, that's how Greenland got its name, just like how Germany got its name because that's where germs come from, or how Canada got its name because everyone there loves ginger ale. And like, haha, Ron Johnson's dumb, but it's worse than that. He was using that disprovable fact to argue that climate change isn't real because Greenland used to be green. It wasn't just a wrong answer. He was given on idiot jeopardy. And by the way, just a reminder to all you pro-gun con artists once again claiming it's the so-called radical left rushing to take away everyone's gun. The most recent president who actually said we should take people's guns away wasn't Joe Biden or Barack Obama. It was this guy. Allow due process so that no one's rights are trampled, but the ability to go to court obtain an order, and then collect not only the firearms, but any, any weapons, 
in the possession or of that individual. Or might take the firearms first and then go to court, because that's another system. Because a lot of times, by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures. Uh, I like taking the guns early. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process second. I like taking the guns early. No Democratic president has ever even come close to saying something like that. Without due process, no less. Mike Pence must have thought he was having a fever dream. Oh, God, someone must have spiked my milk with 2% milk. From the devil's teat! <laughs> the GOP and its allies and the right-wing media and the gun lobby are at odds with the vast majority of Americans who have said in poll after poll they want this senseless epidemic of horrific gun violence to stop. There are proven solutions we could implement, and there are bills the Senate could pass right now that would make a difference. But despite the fact that a majority of Americans want these solutions and want gun violence to stop, one of our two major parties are under what you might call idiot control. This has been a closer look. <laughs> God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer and other serious illnesses and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.